Flamio Hotman, welcome to Channel Frederator, the cartoon center of the internet. Today, we're flying straight into the eye of the storm to unveil the saga of a boy who, with his trusty glider, loyal sky bison, and a heart full of courage, embraced his destiny as the savior of the world, Avatar Aang. We're trying something new with this video. It's gonna be a combination of Aang's biography with some lesser known facts about everyone's favorite cabbage crasher. We'd like to make sure that all the fans out there know everything there is to know about Aang, including some facts from the comics and other canon resources. Think of this video as an all-encompassing resource for the fanbase. So whether you're a bender or a non-bender, Fire Nation or Water Tribe, it's time to embark on a whirlwind journey. We'll explore the wonders, secrets, and challenges of a boy forced to grow up in the face of adversity, all in our grand tour of 107 facts about Avatar Aang. Hold on tight to Appa and maybe avoid the cactus juice, because this is one adventure you don't want to miss. Number 1. Born 165 years before his death, Aang has the second longest lifespan of any known avatar, bested only by Avatar Kyoshi who lived an impressive 230 years. Aang's extended lifespan isn't just due to his natural vitality, but largely because he was frozen in an iceberg for 100 years. Number 2 there's a deep, spiritual connection between Aang and the Fire Nation royal family. Because Avatar Roku, the avatar preceding Aang, was the maternal great-grandfather of Zuko, Azula, and Ki, Aang was actually spiritually related to them. In the grand scheme of things, it was almost like family fighting family during the ultimate conflict of the Hundred Year War. Number 3. Not many know this, but Aang's name translates to peaceful soaring in Chinese. Quite fitting for our high-flying, peace-bringing avatar, don't you think? Number 4. When it came to conceptualizing Aang's physical appearance and movements, the creators found inspiration in an unlikely source, a young boy named Arjuna, the son of the martial arts consultant on the show Sifu Kisu. Photographed by Brian Konietzko when he was just six, Arjuna's kung fu movements would become the basis for Aang's dynamic airbending forms. Number 5. A fun bit of trivia about Aang's design. His adult beard was modeled after none other than series co-creator Michael Dante DiMartino. It seems that some elements elements of the creators themselves made their way into Avatar. Number 6. If you recall, during the climactic battle against Azula, Aang was hit with a lightning bolt that nearly ended his life. He survived, but was left with two scars. One on his back, where the lightning entered, and another on the sole of his left foot, where it exited. These scars were more than just physical. They were a constant reminder of the dangers he faced in his role as Avatar. Number 7. Aang's journey of maturation and growth is beautifully symbolized in the names of the first and last episode of the series. First, the boy in the iceberg, and last, Sozin's Comet Part 4, Avatar Aang. We watch him grow from a playful, carefree boy to a wise and powerful avatar. Number 8. Not many people notice this, but according to Katara, Aang was left-handed in one of his past lives. Even avatars can switch things up every few lifetimes. Number 9. Sadly, Aang passed away before his granddaughter Jinora was born. He never got a chance to meet any of his grandchildren. Though he may not have met them, his legacy lived on through them, shaping the future of airbending. Number 10. Aang's journey to becoming a fully realized avatar was faster than any other known avatar. Given that he was trapped in an iceberg when he was supposed to start his training, he only officially began after his release. This makes his journey just 12 months. Number 11. While we usually see Aang in his Air Nomad robes, there's a special accessory he wore during Zuko's coronation, a necklace. This necklace bears a striking resemblance to the one found on the skeleton of Monk Gyatso, his airbending teacher and father figure. Number 12. Have you ever noticed the similarities between Aang's time encased in an iceberg and Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytic theory of the id, ego, and superego? It's a bit of a mind bender, but hear us out. In Freud's theory, the ego is represented by the small visible part of the iceberg, while the id, the unconscious self, is the massive submerged portion. When Aang encased himself in ice while in the avatar state, the visible part represented his conscious self, while the submerged part signified his immense, often unconscious avatar power. Number 13. When the creators first pitched the series, Aang was supposed to be just 10 years old. Following a suggestion from Eric Coleman, they decided to age him up to 12. Imagine how different things might have been with a younger Aang. Number 14. Sokka's sword instructor, Master Piandao, and Aang share a unique connection. They are the only two characters in the original series who had both their parents as benders. It seems that bending runs strong in their families. Number 15. 
Aang holds the unique distinction of meeting the original source of each bending art during his lifetime. He met a flying bison for air, the moon spirit for water, badger moles for earth, and two dragons for fire. It's like he had a direct line to the roots of bending itself. Number 16. Co-creator Michael Dante DiMartino admitted that Aang was the hardest character to find a voice for, across both the original series and The Legend of Korra. Despite this challenge, they found the perfect fit and brought Aang to life. Number 17. A little known fact about Aang in The Legend of Korra. He was first voiced by actor Rob Paulson. However, in a post-production change, D.B. Sweeney took on the role. Number 18. Aang is proudly displayed as the representative airbender in the opening sequence of The Legend of Korra. Number 19. Aang's encounters with bloodbending were momentous occasions in the series. He holds the distinction of being the first known avatar to be subjected to bloodbending. Number 20. He didn't just experience bloodbending either, he also fought against it. Aang was the second known individual to break free from a bloodbender's hold, though this was only possible by entering the powerful avatar state. Number 21. Aang's abilities extended beyond the four elemental bending arts. At the end of the original series and in the final episode of the first book of The Legend of Korra, he was shown using energy bending, the ability to bend another person's life energy. Number 22. While we saw Aang take away Fire Lord Ozai's bending using energy bending in the original series, he demonstrated the flip side of this ability in The Legend of Korra. With this, he restores Korra's bending, making him the first person known to be capable of restoring another's bending. Number 23. Aang's marriage is unique in the Avatar universe. He was the first known Avatar to have an interracial marriage, hailing from the Air Nomads and marrying Katara of the Southern Water Tribe. Number 24. Aang's connection to the Southern Water Tribe went beyond his marriage to Katara. In fact, he is the only known Air Nomad to be considered an honorary member of the Southern Water Tribe. Number 25. Aang's union with Katara brought another first for the Air Nomads. Their daughter Kaya made Aang the first known Air Nomad to have a waterbending child. Number 26. Aang's presence in the original series is almost constant. Out of all the episodes, there's only one where he doesn't appear. Zuko alone. And that one, of course, is all about Zuko alone. Number 27. Avatar Extras revealed that Aang had a favorite food, the egg custard tart. His love for this dish was clearly visible when he discovered it in the Great Divide. Number 28. Aang's love for food didn't end with custard tarts. He was so fond of a vendor's seaweed wraps in the Earth Kingdom that the vendor renamed them Aang Aang rolls in his honor. Number 29. Aang's legacy permeates the world of Avatar. His image is printed on the obverse side of the Yuan Bill, a testament to his influence and significance. Use one of these bills to buy yourself some tea from the Jasmine Dragon. I hear it's hot and delicious. Number 30. Aang's abilities continued to set him apart even within the earthbending community. Despite not being a metal bender, Aang is the only known non-metal bending earthbender in the Avatar franchise with the ability to use seismic sense. Number 31. Aang was the first known Avatar to have his photograph taken. Good thing he's so photogenic. Number 32. Aang is a playable character in Nickelodeon's video game, Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 Grand Prix. Number 33. In July 2020, Aang's character was incorporated into the MOBA game Smite. A battle pass was launched that featured two skins for Merlin, a wizard who uses different elements in battle. The skins allowed him to look like Aang did in Book 1 or like he did during his final battle against Ozai, complete with access to the Avatar state. Number 34. Aang also made a cameo in Nicktoon's Attack of the Toybots as a master model. This means that within the context of the game, he was captured and needed to be rescued. Number 35. He's also a playable character in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, and it seems like he's a favorite among competitive players. S-Tier Aang. He's strong in his own universe and in others. Number 36. Aang was born to two Air Nomads in 12 BG. Despite being an integral part of the Avatar cycle, Aang's childhood was relatively normal until his destiny was revealed. Number 37. Aang was identified as the Avatar because he picked out four specific toys from thousands, the same toys that previous Avatars had selected as children for generations. This practice mirrors a real-life tradition of Tibetan Buddhist monks who use a similar method to identify the reincarnations of the Tulku Lama. Number 38. After this revelation, his life changed dramatically. He was taken away by the monks of the Southern Air Temple who chose to keep his avatar status a secret from him, a decision that undoubtedly would have heavy repercussions later in his life. Number 39. 
Aang had the privilege of traveling extensively around the world at a young age. As an air nomad, he got a first-hand view of the different cultures and peoples that make up the world he was destined to protect. Number 40. While traveling, he visited cities in the Earth Kingdom like Omashu and made friends like Bumi. These friendships would prove to be very valuable and instilled in him the importance of bonds and camaraderie. Number 41. In the Fire Nation, Aang developed close bonds with children like Kuzan, demonstrating early on his ability to make friends across cultures and nations. This trait would serve him well in his future diplomatic duties. Number 42. One of Aang's childhood adventures was saving a dragon egg from poachers alongside Kuzan. This not only underscored Aang's bravery, but also his commitment to balance and harmony among all living creatures. Number 43. Monk Gyatso plays a pivotal role in Aang's life. Serving as Aang's guardian and mentor at the Southern Air Temple, Gyatso was not only a teacher, but also a father figure for the young Avatar. It was Gyatso who provided Aang with a sense of home and stability amid the great expectations placed upon him. Number 44. One significant event in Aang's childhood was the choosing of his Sky Bison companion, a tradition among air nomads. He chose Appa, and we all thank him for doing so. Appa best boy. Number 45. Prodigiously gifted, Aang was able to master complex bending moves quickly. By the age of 6, he was already a better airbender than children twice his age, and by 10, he had surpassed his own teachers. Number 46. Aang's skills as an airbender were so advanced that he earned his airbending tattoos and the status of an airbending master at the young age of 12. This made Aang the youngest airbending master in the history of the air nomads. Number 47. His creation of the air scooter technique was a major factor in this early achievement. Number 48. Aang's life took a significant turn when he was informed about his status as the Avatar at the age of 12, four years earlier than the traditional age of 16. Number 49. Despite his Avatar status isolating him from the other children, Monk Gyatso made sure that Aang enjoyed some aspects of a normal childhood. Gyatso knew what kinds of pressures Aang would face as he was friends with an avatar himself. Number 50. Fear and confusion about being sent away for further training led Aang to running away with Appa. It could be said that the hefty expectations placed upon a young child caused his untimely disappearance. Number 51. Of course, his running away led him into a storm and had Aang and Appa trapped in ice for a century. Number 52. Aang entered the Avatar state unconsciously to save himself and Appa from drowning, and created an ice sphere around them using a combination of airbending and waterbending. Number 53. Aang was discovered and released from his icy cocoon by Katara and Sokka of the Southern Water Tribe. Number 54. Prince Zuko was on the case pretty much immediately afterward, as he was incredibly determined to capture the Avatar and restore his honor. Number 55. Aang, Katara, and Sokka, or as we like to call them Team Avatar, embarked on a quest to find a waterbending master who could teach both Katara and Aang, all while evading Zuko's relentless pursuit. If only they knew how helpful Zuko could actually be. I guessed first he had to do some learning himself. Number 56. While helping Senlin Village deal with a rampaging spirit, Aang ventured into the spirit world. There he met Avatar Roku's animal guide, Fang, who instructed him to visit the Avatar Temple on Crescent Island during the winter solstice. Number 57. Despite conflict with the Fire Sages who were loyal to the Fire Lord, Aang managed to speak with Roku, who warned him about the return of Sozin's Comet, which would grant the Fire Nation the power to win the war. Number 58. Aang was captured by Admiral Zhao, but was freed by Zuko, disguised as the Blue Spirit. Don't get the wrong idea though, this rescue was a tactical move from Zuko, who wanted to capture Aang himself. Number 59. Upon reaching the Northern Water Tribe, Aang was dismayed to find that Master Paku refused to teach Katara combat waterbending due to tradition. However, Katara managed to change Paku's mind, and both she and Aang began to learn under him. Number 60. Their peace was short-lived as Admiral Zhao launched an attack on the Northern Water Tribe. In response, Aang sought the guidance of the Ocean and Moon Spirits, patrons of the tribe, who revealed themselves to be in the mortal world. Number 61. Zhao succeeded in killing the Moon Spirit, causing a drastic reduction in the Waterbenders and Aang's power. This also made Sokka's girlfriend turn into the Moon. That's rough, buddy. Number 62. In a show of incredible power and determination, Aang merged with the Ocean Spirit and annihilated the Fire Nation fleet, winning the battle. Many more battles to come, sorry my young Avatar friend. 
Number 63. Aang, Katara, Sokka, and their new friends left the north and arrived at an Earth Kingdom base where they planned to find King Bumi so that Aang could learn earthbending. Number 64. The general attempted to forcibly trigger Aang's avatar state, which at that point was a big no-no. Thus, Team Avatar decided to travel alone. Number 65. Upon reaching Omashu, they found that the city had been taken over by the Fire Nation. Bad luck. Number 66. After a series of unfortunate events, including a failed prisoner exchange, Aang managed to find Bumi. However, he told him he wouldn't leave Omashu, and encouraged Aang to find a master who understood the principles of neutral Jing. Number 67. In the city of Gaoling, they attended an earthbending tournament where they discovered a blind girl named Toph Beifong, who was an incredible earthbender. She used her unique technique of earthbending to win the tournament, catching Aang's attention. Number 68. Toph later joined Aang's group as his earthbending teacher. She took some convincing thanks to her fancy upbringing, but it was all good in the end. Number 69. Aang struggled with earthbending due to its nature being the direct opposite of air. However, under Toph's guidance, he made progress and successfully bent some earth within a day of starting his training. Now that's what I call progress. Number 70. Aang was unsettled after capturing a Fire Nation soldier as the young man believed that the air nomads were evil. Propaganda at work, folks. Number 71. While taking a break at the Misty Palms Oasis, the group was sent to Wan Shitong's library. There, they discovered important information about a solar eclipse that could render firebenders powerless. Number 72. With good news comes bad, as Appa was captured and sold by desert tribesmen while Team Avatar perused the ancient library. Number 73. The group decided to head to Ba Sing Se to inform the Earth King of the impending solar eclipse and the opportunity it presented. Number 74. They faced many challenges, including an attempted breach of Ba Sing Se by a Fire Nation drill, and the political conspiracy within the city headed by Long Feng and the Dai Li. Number 75. After reuniting with Appa and revealing Long Feng's betrayal, Aang received a message from Guru Pathak. The Guru wanted to teach Aang to control the Avatar state, and thus Aang set out to meet him at the Eastern Air Temple. Number 76. Despite making significant process and opening his chakras, Aang was unable to let go of his emotional attachment to Katara, which hindered the opening of his thought chakra. This was brought on by a vision of her in danger, which prompted him to rush back to Ba Sing Se. Number 77. In Ba Sing Se, Aang and his friends were confronted by Azula, Mai, and Tai Li, who had infiltrated the city. In the ensuing conflict, Aang entered the Avatar state but was struck by Azula's lightning, causing severe injury and disconnecting him from the Avatar state. Number 78. While mortally wounded and unconscious, Aang entered the spirit world, where he reconnected with his previous four incarnations to help heal the Avatar spirit. Number 79. Aang awoke aboard a Fire Nation ship, initially fearing that he'd been captured. However, he discovered that it was commandeered by Team Avatar and their allies. Number 80. The group spent some time in the Fire Nation, preparing for an invasion on the day of the eclipse while evading a mysterious assassin dubbed as Combustion Man. Number 81. On the day of the eclipse, Aang, Sokka, and Toph tried to find Fire Lord Ozai, but Azula successfully kept them at bay. Realizing that their plans had failed, they retreated to the Western Air Temple. Number 82. The group found refuge there, where Zuko eventually located them and expressed his desire to join their group and become Aang's firebending teacher. After initially refusing him, Aang decided to give Zuko a chance after he protected the group from Combustion Man. Number 83. Zuko's first attempts to teach Aang firebending were unsuccessful due to his own inability to bend fire, caused by a shift in his motivation and internal balance. They visited the Sun Warriors, the original firebenders, and learned the true essence of firebending from the dragons Ron and Shaw. Number 84. While Aang started mastering the four elements, he still struggled with the prospect of killing Fire Lord Ozai to end the war, a decision that went against his air nomad teachings. He refused to eat raw meat, how is he going to end a human life? Number 85. While on Ember Island, Aang had a series of nightmares about his impending confrontation with Fire Lord Ozai, causing severe sleep deprivation and stress. This prompted him to seek solitude on a mysterious island that appeared overnight. Number 86. The island was actually a giant lion turtle, an ancient being. This encounter taught Aang the forgotten art of energy bending. Number 87. The final battle against the Fire Nation, known as the Sozin's Comet Battle, took place in the capital city. Aang confronted Fire Lord Ozai, who had declared himself Phoenix King. In the final face-off, Aang managed to subdue Ozai without killing him. Using energy bending, he stripped Ozai of his firebending abilities, thereby effectively ending his reign of terror. Number 88. 
Following the end of the Hundred Year War, Aang and his companions parted ways, and Aang dedicated his time to re-establishing harmony and order. Number 89. Aang and Katara visited Yudao, when Zuko withdrew his support for the decolonization process. The situation was complicated. Zuko saw the colonies as prosperous communities with a right to exist, while Aang perceived them as a threat to the balance between the four nations. Number 90. Aang and Katara promised to find a peaceful resolution and approached Earth King Kue. However, Kue's decisions to remove the colonies by force did not sit well with Aang, so he rushed back to persuade the locals to leave before a new war broke out. Number 91 Amidst increasing tensions and the eruption of the battle for Yudao, Aang decided it was impossible to keep the nations apart. He halted the battle and convinced Kue to allow the old colonies to remain with their own governing bodies. Number 92 Aang repurposed the official Avatar Aang fan club into the first Air Acolytes to revive Air Nomad culture, a significant move towards preserving the customs and traditions of his people. Number 93 Aang, along with Katara and Sokka, then decided to help Zuko in his quest to find his long-lost mother, Ursa. Their search led them to the remote village of Hira and into the Forgetful Valley, where they sought the aid of the Mother of Faces, a powerful spirit. They discovered that Ursa had her face and memories changed, but the team managed to get them restored. Number 94. Aang had an encounter with the spirit of Avatar Yang Chen, inspiring him to revive Yang Chen's festival. This prompted a mission to the Earthen Fire Refinery, where they discovered it had been built on sacred air nomad lands. Number 95. When an earthquake trapped Katara, Toph, and several others in a mine beneath the refinery, Aang saved them. He also learned that the festival was initially designed to pacify the spirit, General Old Iron. After a confrontation with the spirit, Aang decided to reform Yang Chen's festival into the Spirit's Friendship Festival. Number 96 Aang went to the Fire Nation to assist Zuko with alleged dark spirit attacks. Upon discovering that several children had disappeared, Aang, Zuko, Mai, and Kalo journeyed to the Dragonbone Catacombs to uncover the Fire Nation's history and find a possible explanation for the spirit's anger. Number 97 the Avatar's investigation led to the discovery that the kidnappings were done by human imposters led by Azula, disguised as Kimurikage spirits. Aang and his friends eventually located and rescued the missing children, though the Kimurikage imposters evaded capture. Number 98. Aang then traveled to the South Pole to spend time with Sokka and Katara. There, he had to deal with the Southern Water Tribe nationalists under Gilak, who intended to overthrow Hakoda, Katara's father, and head chieftain of the South. Aang found himself in the middle of a tense prison exchange at the Bridge of No Return. In the ensuing battle, he saved Hakoda and Melina from falling to their deaths. Number 99 Later, Aang traveled to the Earth and Fire Refinery again, discovering a city dubbed Cranefish Town. He was then tasked by Lao Bei Fong to help settle disputes between benders and non-benders at the new settlement. Upon investigating a series of sabotages at non-bender-owned factories, Team Avatar decided to intervene, resulting in he and Katara staying to help develop Cranefish Town into a better community. Number 100 Aang played a significant role in transforming the former Fire Nation colonies into the United Republic of Nations, with the renamed Republic City as its capital. He worked with Zuko to ensure the city's growth into a prosperous environment and dealt with a growing number of bending criminals. Number 101 Aang strived to revive the culture of the Air Nomads, reconstructing old recipes, scouring Air Temple ruins for documents, and restoring the ancient Air Temples. He also built a fifth temple near the heart of Republic City, Air Temple Island, to house a herd of surviving flying bison and a new type of winged lemur, the ring-tailed winged lemur. Number 102 Aang married Katara and they had three children. Despite experiencing family tensions due to his duties as Avatar and keeper of Air Nomad traditions, Aang remained supportive of his family, even finding solace and rejuvenation in the hermitage of an ancient Air Nun, Master Wangmo. Number 103 Aang's efforts for maintaining peace and order included dealing with notorious crime boss Yakon, a master bloodbender. He assisted Toph Beifong, the chief of police, in Yakon's arrest, and used energy bending to permanently remove Yakon's bending. Number 104. Even as his health began to deteriorate, Aang continued to work for the betterment of Republic City, teaching his son Tenzin the way of the Air Nomads and carrying out peaceful conflict resolution. Number 105. Aang's time frozen in an iceberg had drained much of his inherent life energy, and he died at a biologically young age of 66. Before his passing, he tasked the Order of the White Lotus to find and care for the next Avatar. Number 106. 
After Aang's death, he was reincarnated into a rebellious girl named Korra from the Southern Water Tribe. Aang's legacy lived on in the massive statue erected in his honor on Aang Memorial Island, and through the work he had done to foster peace, unity, and cultural understanding. Number 107. Aang continued to guide Korra on her journey as Avatar through visions and spiritual connections, reminding her of her duty and passing on his wisdom even in death. From his journey as an airbending novice to becoming the fully realized Avatar, Aang's story teaches us the importance of balance, compassion, and understanding in the face of adversity. His life reminds us to continue learning, growing, and seeking to understand each other, for that is the true path to peace and balance in our world. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about our latest videos exploring your favorite cartoons and favorite characters. If you've got your own favorite Aang moments or facts that we missed, we'd love to hear them down in the comments below. And as always, never forget, Frederator loves you!